For the 10th World Meeting of Families in Rome, parishes from the United States traveled to the Eternal City to take part in the event and celebrate the Christian tradition of marriage and family life. One of the members of this U.S. delegation was Bishop John Francis Dorfler of the Diocese of Marquette. He spoke on the accompaniment that he and his diocese offer to married couples. What we strive to do uh, with married couples as best we can is to walk with people on their journey of faith. Uh, for instance, in marriage preparation, we try to foster mentor couples that can come to know and develop a friendship with uh, a young couple who's preparing for marriage and uh, not only uh, help them in you know, part of the you know, instruction or so forth to learn more about marriage and uh, and the, the, the church's beautiful teaching on marriage, uh, but also just to be able to walk with them on their journey of faith. One of the difficulties, I think, is uh, that couples face is a sense of loneliness or isolation in those first years of marriage, especially when problems may arise. And it's our hope over time that uh, by fostering mentor couples, they know that there's someone there they can reach out to. An important contributor to couples having healthy and holy marriages is consistent participation in the sacraments and being actively involved in parish life. I think we need to help couples, um, like as soon as they're married, make sure, make sure that they make steps to live their faith. Like even mass attendance, helping couples to attend mass, and then helping them to belong to a parish and to get involved in some of the activities of the parish. There are many challenges facing married couples in our era. One of the biggest challenges is getting young people to be able to combat what Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI called the dictatorship of relativism that often grabs people in their youth and stops them from building relationships grounded in faith that could build to a fruitful marriage. One couple, Michael and Deanne Johnson from Texas, are on a mission to form young men and women for fruitful relationships. I think that there's this, uh, this overarching moral relativism and emotivism that is prevalent in a lot of youth. And so that's always a challenge, especially with, with teenagers. But the idea, of course, is that you're supposed to form a relationship with them. And that relationship, if it's something that's Christocentric, then it's something that whether they experience the benefit of it then and there in the school, that's not, that's not so important because I'm not, it's not my job to convert them. But what my job is to show them something that eventually eventually they'll catch on to, whether that's 10 or 20 years down the road, is essentially at this point to kind of combat moral relativism, but as so that, so that they don't go, so they don't flee from Christ, essentially, is what we're, what we're after. The trick in combating moral relativism, Michael has found, is building fundamental relationships. Well, I mean, everything that we do as a faith is based on this idea of relationship. You know, God is, is a, a relational being. God is, he builds his, he, he makes his people to be relational beings. And so if we're structuring this in a way that reveals some kind of authentic relationship, a real authentic relationship, then what they're getting in the school, even if it's, if it's by way of relationship with their teacher, as someone who, who they can rely on and who's direct them towards something that's objectively true and not moral, uh, morally relativistic. Deanne, his wife, focuses on building these fundamental relationships early in order to build trust and fundamentally trust with God and his church. The art of accompaniment, we're doing that with our engaged couples right now, like we do a mentor couple program, but that relationship like Michael's talking about, like that, that has to start way before a couple shows up at the parish office asking for a wedding date. Like We have to learn how to walk with teens and earlier so that they build trust within the church because I think right now that's the big struggle is, that is teens right. don't trust the, they don't trust the church, they don't trust um, like well, the church says so, so you should just trust us that this is what you need for a, a strong marriage or a happy life. But when we walk with couples or we walk with, with teens and we have that relationship and that trust, and they're much more open to that conversion experience. 
The World Meeting of Families brought together parishes from around the world so that they could come together and learn from one another on the shared challenges they face in protecting and nurturing the family and the beauty and successes they have in watching those young people who do marry and start a family blossom. <laughs>